Greetings. My name is Jamal Gibson. I will be bringing and listen tonight. Let us pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. Thank you for this time we have to study your word. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, uh, tonight's title of the message tonight is Submission. Text is James 4, 7 through 10, reading from the NIV. Verse 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and when and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Tonight I'm going to be dealing with not all of this text, but uh, seven verses 7 and 8. Once again, we're talking about submission. Christians should be submissive. Since Christians should be submissive, what should we do? Christians should be submissive and submit to God. Plain and simple, simply put, um, we should submit ourselves to God. When I think about submission, I kind of, um, I think about learning to do things the right way. Um, I always think about the lessons my uh, father taught me when I was growing up, being a brick mason. And uh, anybody that knows me knows that I like to use several analogies and backstories when I teach. Um, one is about football, one is about fishing, and my major one is about being a brick mason. Um, if I were to introduce this message, I would say that we should submit ourselves therefore to God. We submit ourselves, therefore, to God by lining up with God. Uh, I remember when I was learning how to lay brick, my daddy was saying that, and when, you, when you're a brick mason, you use a line, corner poles, a line, and you have to lay the brick to the line. You have to line up the brick with the line. Um, we have to line our lives up with God. That's the number one thing when we are submitted to God. We submit ourselves, therefore, to God by taking ourselves out of the way. Uh, that is so important to know that when we're going to submit to God, we have to remove ourselves from the throne. We have to get self out of the way. And that's uh, sometimes a very difficult thing to do because we want to do things our way. But they can always lead to catastrophe. To submit ourselves to God in this in this introduction, we have to become a true follower of Christ. To and I want to point out to line up to something, we have to put our focus on the object and strengthen ourselves to it. Since Jesus is the object of our faith. Submitting to Christ means that we have to keep our eyes on Christ and line ourselves up with him. So we should submit ourselves to the Lord, to God, and we should not submit ourselves to the ways and thoughts of this world. That's what we shouldn't do. What we should do is submit ourselves to God. Christians should submit themselves to God by resisting the devil and he will flee from you. Christians should submit to God by resisting the devil and he will flee from you. Going back to the text, it says, submit yourselves to God Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
Come near to God, and he will come near to you. So how do we resist the devil? I know we hear it all the time. We heard it in songs, and we, 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 that's a very common thing. If we've been to Sunday school, and been to Bible class, and heard our pastors and preachers, they talk about resisting the devil, he will flee. And, um, but, but how do we do that? We, the, we resist the devil by taking a public stand. Does that mean I mouth off at people? No, that's, that's not what that means. That means I take a public stand for living for Christ. That's how I resist the devil. I resist the devil under God's directive, speaking God's word at the right time as God directs. It's very important. Taking the public stand. In other words, when I'm out on the highway, when I'm, when I'm at my job, I always was taught that the biggest sermon that I'd ever preach is my lifestyle and how I respond to adversity when adversity comes. Being that we're very human, sometimes we may respond to ad adversity in different ways, but how do we respond to adversity when it happens? Do we resist? the devil by doing it God's way publicly under God's directive. We also can resist the devil by being a visible witness to God's goodness and grace. When we signed up for being a Christian, we signed up not for a bed of roses, but we signed up for some uh, torturous things that are going to happen to us. But that's okay. That's okay because God never promised us that it would be easy, but he said that he would be with us. And I'm a witness that there are some things that can happen to us that we thought would never happen to us, but if we resist temptation in those hard times, Satan will flee from us. We resist the devil by willingly becoming a non-compliant person to Satan's schemes and plans. In other words, we have to willingly, consciously, be non-compliant to what Satan wants us to do. There are times where thoughts are in our mind or we will be in situations where we want to act out out of our humanity. But to resist the devil, we have to learn to operate out of our new nature. Christians should submit themselves to God by resisting the devil, and he will flee from you. We resist the devil. The second part says, he will flee from you. In other words, when I do etymology on these words, I'm always amazed because it opens up a whole different understanding for me. The enemy will retreat when the cavalry shows up because the enemy is a defeated foe and our man and our gun. Satan will flee if we resist. This doesn't mean that Satan won't try to regroup and come back again because we're in a war. We'll win some battles and we'll have some battle scars but inevitably, Satan will flee from us and we'll have victory in that battle. But don't be deceived, there'll be other battles, there'll be other tests, there'll be other trials. It may not be the same test again, it'll be a different one. But it all boils down to us resisting the devil and he will flee. And all of this is done by faith. Christians should submit to God by coming near to God and he will come near to you. You know, I heard that so many times growing up that draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Come near to God, he'll come near to you. But I never fully understand, understood a lot of this until I allowed God to take me deeper and I started doing the etymology on these words and started really understanding what he was saying. Uh, the first part of it, it says, come near to God. You know, growing up as a son of a brick mason, uh, I learned a lot of things 
about adversity. And on the job, we had to come together a lot. Uh, we had to work together or the job wouldn't get done. Someone would uh, not do their part and it'll cause a lot of conflict. But through those lessons, I learned to get closer to the Lord and to trust him. Now, in this is saying, come near to God in place or position. Those who are near to God have access to God. Um, uh, I think about this, like when I get home and my children embrace me, I got some of my children that sit in certain places, but all of them are near to me. And we always have a good time laughing and talking. Uh, the rabbi used to say to make nigh the equivalent of make proselyte. In other words, we have to divorce our way of thinking and draw near to God's thinking. Right? I also studied this word and it talked about to throttle, to hold on to. So I think about how when I get home to my kids a lot of times, they give me a hug and they won't let go. They hold me tight and sometimes I play this game with my sons where they squeeze me and I squeeze them tight and I say, who gonna win, who gonna win? But that's what this is talking about. Hold on to God, get close to God, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Come close to me and I'll come close to you. When we come close to God, this causes a closeness and a bond that fosters a relationship that regulates our behavior. When we come close to God, that helps us to get closer to God so he can direct our path. But how do we do that? We come near to God by getting in the word. I know this it's very simple to say, but a lot of times it gets difficult to carve out time to read our word. We come near to God by praying, reading our word and praying through prayer, through, through true prayer, heartfelt prayer, and allow God to speak to us. We come near to God by staying focused on God. You know, like I said earlier, there are so many distractions. Going back to their brick job, there were so many distractions that, that could occur during the day, but I had to learn that if I was gonna get any work done, I had to focus on the goal. I had to line up to the line, and there were just things that had to happen for the job to move forward. So we have to stay focused or we'll lose time. We come near to God by taking his opinion on things and letting our opinions on things go. We have to see things the way God sees it. That's how we draw near to God, by letting go of our thoughts and thinking better thoughts, thinking his thoughts, learning to see things and situations the way God sees it. Draw nigh unto God and he will draw now unto us. I like the way that those words are put together because I can visualize a child holding on to their parent, wanting to be near their parent, right? Draw now unto me, come close to me and I'll come close to you. The closer we are to God, the more he will keep us the closer we are, the more we learn his wisdom, and his wisdom will become our way of life. So reading our Bibles, praying, coming to church, when we can come to church. I know we um, had some things going on this past year and a half, but through social media, we were still able to keep up with what was going on in church, and, I, and I'm glad for that, amen? He will come near to you. He will come near to us by guiding our footsteps. I have learned that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. 
But we have to get near to God. We have to read his word. We have to pray. We have, sometimes we have to fast. And that doesn't guarantee that it's going to feel good all the time because it won't feel good all the time. We won't know why we're going through things. We won't feel like it's necessary. But that's when we should embrace God even more. That's when we should trust God even more. That's when we should lay out on his word even more. Drawing near to him. The best thing to do when we're going through some of these terrible things is to draw near to God. Not drawing near to our anger, drawing near to our own thoughts, hoping that something bad happened to someone else. Draw near to God. He will, when we draw near to God, he will come near to us, making us safe and secure as we lean on him. Now notice I said we'll be safe and secure. We might not feel that way. We honestly may not feel that way, but I'm a witness that God will make you safe and secure, and he will work things out in your favor. If we have faith enough to hold on and draw near to him, he will draw near to us. He will come near to us by keeping us in times of depression, times of anxiety, and times of misfortune. While on this journey, in our lifetime, there will be things, situations that happen. It happened to the best of the ones that we read about in the word. Uh, anxiety, depression, a number of things, n a number of emotions anger, frustration. But the only way that I see is God's way. Drawing near to God. Drawing near to him. Laying out on his word. Submitting ourselves therefore unto God. True submission It's difficult a lot of times because we have a way that we think is correct and sometimes we feel as if God is being unfair or God allows something to happen to us that we think shouldn't have happened to us or God gave somebody else more than he gave us but that's not true God is fair, even when we don't feel like it. So, I heard a song today where a guy, a guy was saying, uh, it's a gospel rap song, he was saying that he trusts God's plan for his life, he trusts God's directions for his life, and he's okay with waiting on God where he is, because he's totally submissive to God and his will. That's the way a Christian should live. Submitting ourselves unto God. Whatever we're going through is no match for God. Whatever situation that we're approaching is no match for God. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what the statistics say. I don't care what we have seen previously happen to other people. And God is in control, and we submit ourselves totally to God. And we learn to draw near to him by reading his word, by laying out of his word. Sometimes we have to cry sometimes. Sometimes we stress out so much that we might incur heart palpitations. No matter what's going on, if we draw near to the best place to be is in God's presence. That's the only security we have, being in God's presence. When we learn to do it that way, it's nothing but blessings. I didn't say it was going to be easy, but it'll be blessings. 
Whatever we're going through, God is bigger than our problems. God is bigger than our enemies. God allows us to go through things to test us. And when he's through testing us, I am a witness standing here today that God will begin to rain down on you things that you never thought you would have. Things that you've been trying to get done for a long time. God will just start making these things happen. But it won't be a social promotion. It has to be real. I have to go to school for real in God's school. Father God, we thank you for this time that we had to share. Lord, I ask that you would bless this word that went forth. And we thank you, Father. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.